Hey guys, it's Steve here from CG Geek, tackling the exciting and hot topic, pun intended, <laughs> of creating a fiery volcano animated in Blender. So, uh, yeah, this has been a, uh, a topic that I've had a few requests for and made this scene the last few weeks now, and uh, very happy with the results, and it's got a lot of great comments online, and everyone wants the tutorial. So, here is the tutorial. We'll be covering lots of simulations in this tutorial. Uh, first particle simulations, then uh, then some fluid simulations and smoke simulations, and uh, just a really fun tutorial on getting familiar with the different uh, uh, simulation abilities in Blender and uh, kind of diving into them and using them in a scene. So without further ado, let's do it. Let's create this volcano. So what do you need first for the volcano? Well, you need a landscape. So to do this, I'm going to be using the landscape add-on. So before you can uh, do anything else, we'll have to go to your file, user preferences, and add-ons. Here we're going to search for the landscape add-on. So just start typing landscape, and you should see Ant Landscape. You'll want to check the box there to enable it, and you're good to go. So you can close that window off now, and go Shift A, add in Mesh Landscape. All right, so we've got a little, little tiny low-res landscape there, and our settings pop up over here. Now, just like uh, pretty much any la uh, add-on works, if you if you click on something else, you'll lose your settings for the uh, the add-on. So, not if you click on something else, but if you rotate or something, all your settings are now disappeared and you cannot adjust it. So, you don't want to do that. You don't want to uh, click away and do something else because you might most likely will lose all your options for adjusting the mesh. So, let's do that again. Landscape. And uh, let's choose some options here. So, first off, um, we're going to change from multi-fractural to, uh, to, I think it's shattered. Shattered is kind of volcanic looking. Eh, it's kind of cool, but um, not exactly what I'm looking for. Let me see. I think, I think the rigid, rigid might be volcano-ish looking. Um, we can just go multi-fractural for now. No, no, no. Let's go, uh, let me see here. Let's go shattered. We'll see what we get out of that. So uh, that kind of gives you a cool landscape to start with. And uh, let's turn the scale up a bit. So the scale is right here, the mesh size. We'll go up to 10 on that. Crank it up nice and large for our scene. And uh, maybe even more, let's go 12, why not? Now you'll see that the bumps got really small. That is because you need to adjust the height, which is right here, it's at 0.5. Let's crank that up to a five. And then you'll see they're all flattened off there and that's because you need to adjust the plateau which will uh, basically allow them to go all the way up to 0.5 there. So the plateau has to be a larger number than the uh, the height. Uh, and I think 5 is kind of tall for the height, so I'll take that down to 4. And now the noise size is too small, so we need to crank that up as well right here. Let's take that up to about a 4. And you can see we're getting some, uh, some better looking mountains now. Um, and you can also try some of these uh, other options. Finding something that looks volcanic. Um, I can't remember the exact one I settled with, but I can quickly jump through here and see which ones look best. Um, rigid, rigid's pretty cool. I'm thinking it's rigid that I uh, that I went with, so I'm going to stay with rigid, and we'll continue to tweak these settings. So uh, the noise size might be a little bit large at four. Let's take it down to three. Um, let's take the height down to three as well. It's just a little bit. Whoops. There we go. And uh, let's crank the depth up a little bit. Now uh, the long, 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 okay, I can't pronounce that. This option here, <laughs> you want to uh, play with this one. This one does a bit of uh, adjusting. Well, I don't really know how to explain. Let me see. Well, gap between successive frequencies, but uh, that's the technical term for it. Uh, just play with that setting a little bit. You'll get some interesting results. Now let's go ahead and crank the subdivisions up to 128. Uh, and now uh, we're getting there. Now basically, well this is a little sharp, so we might want to uh, adjust the gain a little bit. Take that down just a tad. And uh, let's try the, uh, well once we're pretty happy with what we're getting here, we're going to play around with the seed. But I still think the noise size might be a little, uh, well let's go a little bit bigger, 1.4. Alright, that's looking pretty sweet. Alright, so let's go through the random seed number here, and we'll get some, uh, some cool varying options. Um, I think we're pretty set on these settings. Let me quick see, what does the dimension do again? I 
Can't recall. Okay, that's kind of like height too, it looks like. I'm going to leave that uh, maybe just above one. Or just below one, I guess. Alright, so let's change the uh, the random seed number here and see what we get. Alright, just you got to jump through here till you find something that looks nice and volcanic. Um, they all look pretty volcanic, but find something that you could kind of carve out a, uh, a hole in. And that's what you're going to want to look for. So, I'm just going to keep jumping along through here. Getting close. You can't be too picky because you can spend way too much time just just doing this, jumping through the random seed. And uh kind of kills creativity when you do that. So, don't be careful not to spend too much time, but go ahead and find something you you like. Uh it's pretty cool. Again, not perfect, but I'm not going to be picky. So, I might just go with I might just go with something like, oh, can't go too long. All right, there we go. Well, yeah, the height might be just a little strong on this, so you can adjust the height, 2.8, just a little bit better. So once you find a C that you're happy with, you might want to tweak the settings just a little bit. That looks, yeah, it looks pretty cool. A lot of these would probably work, but I'm being picky, like I told you guys not to be. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, we'll just go with uh, say. Oh, that's pretty good. We'll go with that. Now I'm going to crank these subdivisions up a little bit more. Let's go 164, maybe. Well, that's not too bad. And let's let's call it good. Uh, one thing you might want to do is change the type to uh, X fall off, and this will basically continue the mesh to both sides of your plane. Uh, it just makes it better for a landscape view. So that's cool, and we should be good to go. Alrighty, just kind of looking over. All right, I'm satisfied with that. So we can uh, we can switch out of these settings now. Um, I'm going to go to sculpt mode. So switch over to sculpt mode right there. Let's drag this down now that we don't need that uh, window there. And I'm going to quick do some modifying to give myself a nice uh, a nice kind of volcanic hole in the ground, hole in the earth that uh, that you could shoot lava out of. So I'm thinking this looks like a nice front view, and I'll just continue it up back here a bit. So to do this, I'm going to use my Sculpt Draw brush right there, and turn the strength up a bit, and uh, just go top view, and find the point that you want right around here, like I said, from front view, or side view, I guess, number three. Right in there is going to be where I go. So I'm just going to rotate up with middle mouse wheel, and then uh, start adding in there. You see I have mirror on, it's doing it on both sides, don't want that. So, uh, sem symmetry lock here, you're going to turn off X mirror, and then you're good to go. So, let's just do that, and uh, draw that in. Make my brush a little bigger, and just kind of bring that hill up there a bit. Alright, that's working out okay. It's kind of losing some detail, though. But, uh, we'll, we'll add that back in. Well, actually, hang on. You also could probably use the grab brush and get the same effect if you're careful. So, uh, kind of just pull them up that way, which would work as well. You might just have to do some smoothening out, but you might save some more detail doing it this way. So, you can do it both ways. I'm going to use a grab brush try and save some detail. There we go. That's kind of working out okay. So, we're basically making this uh, this little volcanic hole in the ground. Alright, that's kind of cool. Um, let's pull up kind of a peak here. Just do kind of a sharp point. That looks kind of sweet. Maybe there too. And uh, let's switch to our pinch drush, uh, brush, not drush, <laughs> pinch brush, and kind of pinch these edges in a little bit there to give it a little bit more rocky, harsh, harsh looking stone like look. And that kind of helps a little bit. You can do that in a few areas. Not bad. Now we want to uh, we'll switch back to our sculpt draw brush here. Hold control down, and that will basically negative, take away mesh. So I'm going to draw kind of a hole in there to bring it down even a little bit further. All right. Kind of draw that hole out there for our lava. And we should be good to go. So now that we have our lava hole there, you could add as much detail to you want as you want. But uh, I'm going to add a little bit of detail. So what I'm going to do is go to Dino Topology right here and click Enable Dino Top right there. And you can see it changes our mesh to triangles, which is good. We just want to choose smooth shading. And uh, we're going to choose a detail size. Well, let's first see how that works if I draw in here. So if I go to wireframe, you can see the amount of detail that gets added in. 
and if I zoom in, it gets heavier and heavier. The default option, I think, will work pretty well for this. But uh, I'm just going to go around and kind of do some more extra detail. So uh, putting, putting some ridges in here and then also holding control and taking away some ridges. Just doing that alone adds a lot of detail. So also kind of finding some of these edges that are low quality here and drawing over them, um, pulling them out a little bit really helps to, uh, to kind of draw attention to them and uh, add more detail. So I'm going to kind of follow some of the ridges that are already here, make some new ones where like lava may have poured down and formed the rock a little bit on your volcano. And uh, it really helps to uh, add some realism to it. So with Sculptra, just doing some of these things, drawing, drawing these little these little hills coming down and then these little crevices by holding control and taking away from the mesh and then just rotating around. Of course, with my middle mouse wheel, I, uh, I can add quite a bit of detail using the dyno topology option um, and just using the default settings pretty much. So this is what I'm going to do for a little while. I might also uh, might also switch to my pinch brush every once in a while here. Where is it? Right here. You can also use P to jump to that uh, little tip there. And then also pinch in some of these areas where I want the detail to stand out a little bit more, like so. But uh, just continue doing that. Uh, hit X twice to go back to your Sculpt Draw brush, if you were wondering, and uh, continue adding the detail that is necessary. So I'll be right back. I'm just going to continue doing this. Don't want to bore you guys with too much of this, t uh, this topic. But uh, you can go as much as you want, really, adding in, uh, adding in these details and pinching them and smoothing them. Uh, hit S if you want to kind of erase part of what you did. You'll switch to your smooth brush, and then you can just kind of smooth out the areas that you don't like if you made a mistake. But uh, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to continue doing this, and then I'll jump back after I've made some more progress just doing what I've showed you in the last five minutes. So one thing I feel I may have skipped over a little bit is uh, with the relative detail option right here. Basically, this depends on your viewport. Depending on how closely zoomed in you are, it will put more or less detail in. So you can see as an example right here, if I zoom out here and turn to wireframe, I'll draw along here and it's basically removing the detail, adding it uh, so, uh, so it's that basically undetailed. <laughs> But if I zoom in here, all right, get up nice and close and do it, it adds detail. So the relative detail is uh, basically depending on how close you are to the mesh with your brush when you're, uh, when you're drying. So this is good for adding details, depending on how detailed you want to be. Say I want this to be real detail, I'll zoom in nice and close here, and I can do some really fine details. But then say an area that I can't see so much over here, I don't need to be as detailed. And I can just kind of stay at this viewport distance and not get not get carried away with too many uh, too many vertices and keep it you know keep it simpler so that's just a little tip that's how the relative detail works uh, it's really sweet and uh, a lot of fun and I'm gonna go back to sculpting I'll catch up with you guys when I'm uh, satisfied all right so there's some more sculpting detail uh, pretty basic nothing crazy but I gotta move on with the tutorial you guys, uh, you guys have as much fun as you want doing it, and uh, you can stop whenever you want. After all, you're doing this for fun. Well, maybe, maybe some of you are, maybe some of you aren't. But regardless, do whatever you want, and then, uh, then call it good. So uh, I think it's about time to place our camera, so we can kind of tell if we need any more detail on this. So what I'm going to do to place my camera is uh, I still have the camera from the beginning in the scene there. So I'm just going to kind of position my viewport where I'd like it, right around here, and then go alt Control 0 and it'll snap your keyboard right to that spot. So uh, that's that's pretty cool, and uh, one thing I'm going to change though is on this camera, I just switched uh, from sculpt mode to object mode if you're wondering, on the camera I'm going to give it a higher focal length because realistically nobody would get super close to a volcano, or at least most people, <laughs> wouldn't get super close to a volcano uh, with their camera. So they probably zoomed in quite a bit, and that's basically what the focal length is. It's the zoom of the camera. So I'm going to give this a focal length of about 100. And then I'm going to hit G and middle mouse wheel to pull that outward. And uh, let's lower that camera a bit too, because uh, someone would probably be taking this from the ground level and then uh, looking up at the volcano. So something along those lines is going to be what I'm looking at. And I'm thinking that's pretty good right there. Uh, just, whoops. You can tweak it a little bit. 
but uh, not bad. Right there is pretty good. And that should look very sweet. As you can see, our camera now might be still a little bit high in the air. Let's just pull that down and then rotate it from uh, front view there. And see what that looks like. That looks pretty sweet. Alrighty. And you can see where I might need to put a little bit more detail into the sculpting. Because uh, this wasn't sculpted there, obviously. So uh, you might have to do a little more sculpting after placing the camera if you do it that method. But uh, yeah, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to throw in a little bit of detail. I'll have to click enable dyno, uh, dyno topology there again. And I'll just throw in a little bit of detail there. Real quick and dirty just so it looks matches a little bit better there. Just a few ridges. Whatever you think volcanic rock might look like. Um, or you could look at reference photos. I encourage you to do that. Did a bit of that uh, before I started. It's always helpful to see what the real thing looks like before you before you go into creating it in 3D. So this is okay. A few, few issues that I'm not really happy. So I'm going to smooth them out there. And then go back to my sculpt draw brush with X twice. And kind of just add some creases in there. Holding control down. And uh, there we go. That doesn't look horrible. Not <laughs> too bad. And eh, maybe a little bit of detail in here, but uh, don't have to do too much. Just kind of highlight those peaks a little bit, and it uh, it looks cool. There we go. That edge there. And along there, maybe. Nice. All right. So um, I think we have it here. I think we have it. Maybe I'll pinch that in there a little bit. Hit P to switch my pinch brush and just kind of tighten that up a little bit. All right. Not bad. So, um, one thing too is I think I want to bring the walls up back here just a little bit. Uh, just so you can kind of see the back there a little bit. And it's a little bit, a little bit of a cool, coolness factor if you can see the back of it. Um, basically the, the whole circle of the, uh, the hole in the ground. Okay, if that made sense. <laughs> All right, let me grab my grab brush there. There you are. And just kind of pull this whole thing up a little bit more back there. I might have to touch up the sculpting a little bit there because it gets a little stretched when you do it with the grab brush. But, all right, there we go. Switch back to our uh, sculpt draw brush and let's just clean this up a little bit. All right, put a few, uh, few edges in there. Just kind of clean up the topology a little bit. Pull it up there. Fill it in there a little bit, maybe add a few creases, holding control down and drawing. Click enable the dyno topology again. There we go. That's better. And let's take this down a little bit right at the center. So hold control down, and just kind of erase the mesh there. Sweet. What does that look like from camera view? A little bit better. You can see it back there. And you can even add a little bit more to that if you want to. But uh, this is what I'm talking about, how it just adds a little detail if you can see beyond where the volcano is coming up there. So uh, feel free to do that. Maybe smooth that out a little bit. Pinch it and call it good. All right. Not bad. Uh, well, actually, this bump there is kind of annoying me. There we go. Just kind of fill that up there. And then, yeah, I'm happy with that enough. There we go. Have a little detail. And let's move on. So uh, now it's going to be the particle system. We have our mesh. That's good. Uh, but now I'm going to use a particle system and start creating the simulation. So um, first off, I'm going to need a low poly version of this mesh for uh, collisions. Whenever you're doing collisions with simulations, having a low quality collision mask or mesh is going to be uh, important. Otherwise, your simulations will take a very long time to calculate and bake and uh, you'll be stuck waiting a long time. So I'm going to shift D this mesh. All right, so I have a duplicate here. Uh, I'll select the original one and just hide it. So you can see down here which one you have selected. Right now I have 00 and 01. I'm gonna hide 00 and go with 01. And I'm just gonna add a modifier to this. This modifier will be uh, decimate, decimate. <laughs> I don't think I pronounced that right. Let me, let me see, decimate. And uh, I'm going to use, uh, I think I'll start with collapse. We'll see how that works. And just take the ratio way down. 
There's a few different methods for doing this here. You have unsubdivide, you have planar, and you have collapse. I think I'm going to go triangulate right there and just take it way down with the collapse option. Down to about a 0, .0 let's go 0 0.06. As long as you have the rough shape, you're still good to go. And I have that right there. Maybe 0 0.05 would even be enough. All right, excellent. If you go uh, Z, you can see the number of faces still. You could probably take that down even further. 0 0.03. Yeah, that should be good. And uh, this is our collision mask, or mesh now. I keep saying mask is mesh. So uh, this is going to be, I'm going to go to my physics tab here and give it a collision. All right. And while I'm here, I will go ahead and give it a fluid collision because this will be our fluid collision too. This is going to be obstacle. And you're going to want to change it from fluid initialization to shell. This is very important. This is something that kind of uh, had me had me confused for a while. I couldn't get the simulation to come out and land onto it. It kept colliding with itself before it even came out. And that is because it was using the volume with the volume initialization. You want to be shell only. So just use shell for the uh, for that option there. And then we don't want any slipping. Okay, so you're gonna go no slip. Because lava, lava doesn't slip very much. It's pretty sticky. So uh, we'll choose no slip and see how that looks. And then last but not least, we're gonna go smoke. Choose that. And this is going to be collision. All right, static is all we want. It's just a static object. So uh, there we go. We got all our collisions set up right off the bat for our simulations there. Just make sure you do that uh, and you won't have issues further on. And let's add our particle system now. So with our cursor still, well, let's just place our cursor in the center of our volcano there. And go shift A and we'll add in a UV sphere. Let me go wireframe here. Uh, let's pull it up a little bit and scale her down. Okay, that's good. And, uh, all right, that's good. We'll just scale it up a little bit, tab into edit mode, and we're going to delete the bottom two-thirds of our mesh here. So just box select with B and uh, delete those bottom vertices. So we have just that, and this is going to be our uh, particle emitter. So uh, you want to check that it's hidden in there underneath your, uh, in your mesh, but not colliding with anything. So you don't want to be touching any of the, uh, the walls of your mesh. And uh, now we're going to add in a force field. This force field is going to be wind. And uh, we're going to rotate it so it's kind of blowing to the side here. I don't know why my viewport's lagging up now. It's kind of weird. But we're going to turn put it to the side there. Pretty much 90 degrees right there. So it's pointing uh, across, across your, uh, your screen. Whoops, that just got messed up. Um, and it'll be adding just a little natural wind to the scene is nice looking. So there we go. Leave the strength at one, leave the flow at one. We'll just leave all the settings at default, but we'll give it a little bit of noise. Alrighty. So now we'll select our, our, our particle emitter and give it a particle system. We're going to go new particle system right there. And, uh, we'll go one, one to 200. We'll be fine. I'll turn my end point here to 200 as well. So it's the same as the particle system, 1 to 200 and 1 to 200 in our frame length. And if I just go play right now, we'll see what our particles are doing. So they're moving very slowly. That's no good. Uh, let me quick see why, why are they moving so slow. It seemed like it happened when I added that force field in. Let me try it without that force field. Nope, it's still moving slow, and I think it has to do with that high-quality mesh that I have hidden. But uh, it's really important to have some smooth frame right here. So let me quick check what's slowing it down and see if I can fix that. All right, so I found the issue, and it was purely because we did not apply our decimate modifier. So you want to do that first on your collision obstacle. You want to apply that modifier. I skipped that part, and that's very important. Apply that, and then our FPS will be back to normal. So now you can play the particle system and see, if I switch to wireframe mode with Z, that they're, uh, they're just dropping, and they're kind of filling up in that hole in the, uh, the what are, okay, volcano, okay, volcano. <laughs> so uh, switch to your particle tab, and first off, let's turn the mass of these way down. We'll go to point 0.2, and that will slow down, well, that won't necessarily slow down, but they'll, they'll have less... Basically, this is like the weight of your particles, and they'll be uh, lighter. All right, now I'm going to go to 
few, well, let's put that, let's put that wind back in there. So force field wind and rotate it to the side there. Now you can see that the particles are blowing a little bit to the side and that's nice. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I want to reduce the gravity that these, these particles have. Basically these particles are going to be the sparks coming out of the volcano and they don't need much gravity. They kind of float in the air and go every which way. So if you go to your field weights, you can see you have the gravity option here. I'm just going to turn that way down. Uh, 0.1, and we'll go even lower, 0 0.02. All right, that's a little better. You can see I'm kind of blowing around there now. Now I'm also going to give it some random uh, speed here. This is basically an emission speed. It will give it a random speed. So I'll go 0 0.3 with that, and you can see that gives it a little more randomness. And then I also want to give it some emission along the Z. So uh, if I move this up, I can see that it's moving it up along the positive Z axis. So I'm going to give this a positive number of like 1. And you can see it starts shooting them up in the air a bit uh, nicely. And I'll also give it a little less emitter uh, emission here. We'll go 0 0.03 there as well. And uh, the last option is the Brownian motion. This is erratic particle movement, which is very good for sparks. So we're going to go ahead and give it 2. And that will just give it some nice variation. All right, so now we need to play with our field weights a little bit. The gravity uh, is still a little too heavy because they're not going above the uh, above the volcano at all. So I'm going to take those down another decimal. And now the wind is too strong too. It's blowing them into the side too, uh, too quickly. So I'm going to take the wind down to about a 0 0.05. And there you go. Now you can see the particles are flying up in the air going every which way. Uh, so the reason I'm turning all these values very low is because I don't want to give the particles too much speed, because the faster they're moving, the smaller the volcano seems. So I'm going to turn the emission down on the Z a little bit here. We'll go down to 0.3 on that as well. And now you can see them just kind of going up and every which way, which, uh, which is good, but I think I want a little bit more wind effect on them. So I'm going to turn the wind up just a little bit. Now you can kind of see most of them go this direction. Uh, I might also turn down the amount of random variation speed. Well, let's just turn down the Brownian motion down to a 1. And that is a little less crazy. So there you go. Your particles kind of come up and you're floating around. And uh, they don't look too bad. Maybe I'll move my emitter up just a little bit there. All right, and how's that looking? Uh, not too bad. Pretty satisfied with that. Maybe just a little bit too much on the wind still. Uh, so I'll go 0, 08. And then let's give them a full lifetime of 200 frames. All right, cool. But we can also give them a random lifetime so they don't all last that for long. Some of the some of the sparks might burn out a little bit. So we'll go 0 0.7 in the random so some of them will die uh, and not make it to 200 frames. All right, and maybe, maybe just give them 150 actual total frames. I don't think we need too many. It runs faster if you don't, so uh, we'll do that. And cool, we have uh, we got our particles floating around there and looking nice and natural. I'm going to kind of move these around just a little bit there. All right, there we go. Nice. All right, make sure it's pulled down there. And that looks uh, pretty sweet. Uh, they might be lasting just a little too long still. Maybe I'll make the lifetime just 100 on them so they don't last too long. But uh, that's the particle system. I think I like that motion. They might be moving a little bit slow, possibly. Uh, you could give them a little bit more gravity pull if you wanted. Just so they seem to move a little faster and have a little bit more weight to them. But uh, that's not too bad now. I'm pretty satisfied with that. So I'll go with it. Um, the number of them you might want to turn up a little bit. So I will think I'll double this or maybe triple it and go 3,000 particles. Eh, what the heck, we'll go 5,000. Sparks are sweet looking. So uh, let's play that through now. And there you go. We got the particles coming out and going haywire. Nice. So I think it's time we set up a render. So that means we have to do the materials for the mesh and the particle system we created. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Now we're not going to be adding the material to our collision object. So uh, what I'm going to do is select my particle system there. All right. And I'm going to bake this. So uh, go cache. You want to make sure uh, you have cache step to one. Uh, let's give it a few subframes down here in the physics. 
Just give that two subframes and go ahead and bake it. Should be quick uh, to start here. And there we go, it's all baked. So the simulation goes and it won't change if you jump back and forth in your timeline. Sweet, so I can hide my uh, collision object for the moment. And option H, unhide my high quality mesh. Go ahead and hide that low quality of version again. And uh, let's do the materials for this mesh. So the materials for this mesh, what is it going to be? Well, first we want that lava spill. The, uh, the, the molten lava that's still really hot and kind of coming down along the edges that gives it the really cool looking uh, lava effect, I guess you could call it. So to do that, um, we're going to be using some uh, vertex or UV maps. Now we might only need one, but we might, we might do two. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is tab into edit mode, um, select the mesh in this area here. Right around there, we'll have the lava spill. All right, that's plenty. Um, and go U, project from view. This might take a little bit of time and then uh, it will be unwrapped. So if I split my window here now, and let's hit T to close off that toolbar and go to my UV image editor, you can see we have this circle. Nice. Uh, what I'm gonna need to do now is open up an image. And this image, uh, there's a link to it in the description, but it's just a texture from CG Textures. Uh, all right, I'm seeing I missed a bunch of vertices here when I unwrap that, and that would be because of this option here. It's limiting the selection to visible. You wanna uncheck that. And now I'll do that one more time. Let's just hit A to unselect all those. Hit C to bring up your circle select again. And select that, that, that portion there. I think I got them all, yes. And now you can go U. A little top view again. You want to make sure you're in top view. Go U, project from view. All right, there. Now we got them all. So as I was saying, you're going to open up an image texture, and this one is a splatter. I'll give a link in the description. You can get it there. But it's just a red and white splatter texture. And uh, you might want to unwrap your image one more time once you have the splatter there just to fix the aspect ratio. Let's go U, project from view, bounds. All right, that fits it nicely in there. So I'm gonna scale this up just a little bit more than that and kind of position the uh, the splatter where I want it. I think I'm gonna like that though. You can see if I hide that, I have a lot of splatter right there. So you can go option H and unhide that then. Um, and I think, I think I'm gonna like that. Let me bring my image back in there. I don't know why that disappeared. All right. Why did that image disappear? Bring you back in. All right, there we go. So uh, I think I'm gonna like that. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the texture to the mesh by adding in a material. So I'll go ahead and tab out of edit mode. Let's split our window here one more time just by grabbing the corner there. And uh, go to node editor. Give myself a little bit more room here. And uh, now that we're gonna add materials, we're gonna be choosing cycles render. You wanna make sure you do that right there. Uh, otherwise you won't see all the options I'm having. So once you've done that, go ahead and with your proper mesh selected, go new material. You'll see it's just basic diffuse right now. And uh, I'll just leave it as that so I can see what I'm getting here. I'm going to add in an image texture node, shift A, image texture, and grab that splatter one there. It's already in the cache and plug her in. So now if I go rendered, you should see the splatter on our mesh. So uh, you can see that it's kind of cutting out a little bit there along the edges is because it's repeating. Um, but we'll fix that. So if we go camera view, you can see now how it is laying on your mesh. And if you tab into edit mode and hit A to select all your vertices, you can kind of position it in real time here. Uh, you might also be able to switch to textured view. It might be a little quicker, uh, but you can't really see it there with the vertices in the way. So I'm just gonna do that and maybe scale this up a little bit. All right and then kind of position position it so I have that splatter coming over coming over the edge real nice. Maybe rotate it a little bit. Maybe scale it down a little bit, get more splatter. Find something you're happy with. All right, that's not too bad. Position that splatter right in there. All right, I, I'm pretty happy with that. Doesn't look, uh, doesn't look too bad. And we'll use that as our UV layout. So cool.
And if you have this ring issue that I created, it is because I think I did two unwraps in a row there. Uh, to fix it, I'm just going to switch to textured viewport here on my viewport shading, tab into edit mode, and then select the vertices in that range that are bright and you're not happy with, with C, doing a circle select. Just run around the outskirts of your mesh, selecting anything you don't like. So that and these here would be the two that I am unhappy with. All right, you can just grab those, and then in your UV editor here, you want to hit Y, which will, uh, oh, you can't do it if sync is on. I had sync right here on, just turn that off. Uh, you want to hit Y, and that will then separate it from the rest of the mesh. And you can just take these, scale them way down, and put them over a white section of the texture there. So now, you can see it looks nice and clean. And we have our lava dripping down along the sides nicely. All right. So uh, it's time to go to the next level with these uh, materials now, and uh, let's push them to look awesome. So what I'm going to do is uh, I have my image texture here, and I have a diffuse, but I don't want to use the diffuse. I'm going to use an emission. So we'll go shader, emission shader. All right, cool. And plug that in there. And, uh, well, let's quick create that other UV map as well. So go choose another UV map there. Click the plus button. We'll name this one uh, ground. All right. And I'm just going to go top view, tab into edit mode, select everything. With the ground UV map selected, you want to make sure you don't have your first one selected. And go U, unwrap. Might take a second. Um, and then we'll have the nice square unwrap version up there. All right, there we go. We have it uh, have it up there. And uh, I'm just going to scale that up by 15. So we have a nice, even bigger. Let's go scale it by 20. All right, so we have a nice big version of that there. And that will work well for the ground texture. So we have our two UV maps now. And we're ready to create this, uh, this ground. So I'm going to add in a add shader. I will plug the emission shader into the bottom of that. And then hook the shader up to the surface. And I'm going to close, let me just get out of edit mode here, there we go. And you can see with the ground texture selected, we have this repeating texture across it. That is because uh, it will be what we use for the volcanic rock and not the lava. Uh, don't worry about that. Let's just switch out of textured view so you can't even see that. I'll go zero on our camera. Alright, so uh, what I'm going to do with this texture is I'm going to kind of convert it. I'm going to use the colors of it basically as a mask to choose what is emitted where. So uh, to do this, I'm gonna start with just a basic color RGB curves. All right, we'll plug that in right there. And uh, this is going to be what I use to tweak it. And then after that, I'm gonna run it into a converter color ramp, uh, except I'm gonna flip these colors around to basically invert whatever I get out of here. And from there, it will go in to the to a uh, color ramp, another color ramp, but this is going to be the basically the color of the flame, the lava, basically the hot areas and then the darker areas. So go ahead and make this a flame material, starting off almost pure white, and then uh, I'm just going to control click in my color here to add another slider, and then uh, I'll give this kind of a bright yellow color, there we go, something hot looking. And then we'll go with an orangey red, something like that, and then a more dark red. All right, and then a very dark red. I don't even need to add another one. Let's minus that out and go uh, with a nice dark red material. There we go. So we've got a nice flame material there. doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and this color ramp is going to be the factor that this color ramp is affecting to be the, uh, the color of the emission. All right. So we're not even going to use the color of this until it's modified by these three nodes to uh, to give us the, uh, the look we're looking for. Now, uh, because we'll need a ground texture there just to kind of see in the background, I'm going to quick add in another texture. This is an image texture. 
You're going to open it up. It's uh, Rock Sharp 36. There'll be a link in the description for this one as well. Uh, just a texture that I thought looked kind of volcanic-like, so uh, I used it. Um, I'll be modifying the colors of it a little bit, but for now, I'm just going to plug it into a shader, diffuse, right there, and then plug it in to the add shader right above the emission. Alrighty. So if I go rendered now, you should see this. Not super pretty. Uh, and that's because I need to modify some of these uh, settings now. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, there's another add-on that I want to use that uh, just kind of speeds up my workflow. And uh, I'd like to encourage you guys to start using it as well. It's really sweet. It's called the uh, Node Wrangler. Or Wrangler, yeah, Node Wrangler. So go ahead and enable that add-on. And uh, a lot of cool features in this one, but the main one that I use is Control shift clicking uh, Now that that's enabled you can control shift click any of your nodes and it will automatically hook it up to basically a viewer node Which is basically an emission shader, but it really helps when you're dealing with these different mask type layers and uh, Adjusting settings like that on individual nodes. All right So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to rendered viewport here and go control shift selecting this RGB curves All right, so I'm gonna kind of go for a hill like shape curve here I want something, uh, want something similar to this. Working with, uh, working with what's hot and what's not hot. All right, we'll stay with that. And if I go to my color ramp now, you can see we have the mask here. Um, and I basically want. All right, that's not looking too bad actually. But I basically want to get as much uh, contrast between here and white. So that's what I'm going to do here. I want to bring in a little bit more black. All right, that looks kind of cool, and we'll see what we get by just adjusting this curve now that I have set up here. All right, that's not too bad. Not too terrible. Just kind of getting as much variation between the two as I can. All right, and then something else I noticed is if you change the individual colors, like green, you can really get some better contrast in there by uh, taking like the green levels up you add some more contrast in there, and somewhat with blue and red as well. So uh, that helps add just a little more detail to the texture. Uh, I don't know if adjusting the red would really do anything in this case, because it already is red. But uh, there we go. So we have that. And then uh, we run it through the, the color ramp node like we have. And then if we put it through the flame, you can see where it's, uh, where it's basically giving it the different colors of... Uh, of the intensity of this basically so you can see uh, that the the darker colors here are more red and the brighter colors are more white and that's exactly what I'm looking for so uh, last thing now is plug our add shader into the surface there and let's just check to see what that's looking like you can see our rock texture in there needs a little tweaking um, but the last thing is going to be adjusting the strength of our shader here and that is going to come from this node. Basically, we want the black and white to be determining what is emitting and what is not. The black will not emit, and the white will emit. So we do that, and now you see we have just the uh, just lava emitting off of our mesh there. Cool. And you can tweak these settings now by adding in just a basic math node. Let me see right here. Converter math. Drop it in there. And if you give it a, uh, a multiply option we'll crank this up to about a 1.5 and we can get some nice bright lava emitting off that mesh so that's pretty nifty uh one thing the reason this isn't working i just remembered is because i haven't set it to use the ground uv map so all you have to do for that is add in a uh, input texture coordinate plug the uv into the vector and then uh, we need to drop in well Actually, wait a minute. I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm sorry. You want to input attribute node. Uh, take the vector into the vector, and now you're just going to type in ground, exactly like you have it written in your UV map there. And it will place that ground texture across uh, your ground there. So that's, uh, that's that. We have a few areas here where it's missing. That's a little weird. Uh, we could tweak those. I think that's where I tweaked the mesh, yeah. So those need to be fixed, but besides that, everything is looking uh, looking pretty decent. Um, I think it's time to open our environment map, so that's what I'll uh, jump into next. Let's first fix these uh, these few issues in our UV map. 
So let's tab into edit mode and select that. All right, you can see that yes, these are causing the issues there. Um, it's because they're missing. Yeah, we got those holes in the mesh there. No good. Uh, I think it's because it was hidden when I unwrapped this. So that would have been my, my bad. Uh, and I'll just try doing that again. You wanna save your project real quick, but go ahead and try unwrapping that uh, project view bounds and letting that, okay, there you go. That happened nice and fast. Um, those sections are still missing. Oh, I know why, because I separated them. All right, that's why. So go ahead and just select those by hitting L. Uh, and I think I just did that. Let's see if that's working right. Yeah, we did. So just hit L on those loose sections and select them with your whole uh, with your whole square of vertices, and we'll go ahead and scale those to 20 like we did before. Now we should be good to go. If I switch to object mode, then rendered mode, we no longer have those issues. Perfect. So yes, yeah, so you can see that the texture is very repetitive right now. Uh, that's basically because the scene is not lit, and I haven't added the little bit of glossiness to this either. But uh, after I do that, it will look better, I assure you. All right, so let's go ahead now and uh, bring in an environment uh, HDR for lighting. So I'm going to switch to my world settings there, click Use Nodes, and we're going to choose that option, the corner right there, little button next to the color there. I'm going to choose Environment Texture, Open, and uh, this is just a HDR. It's called Sierra Madre, and uh, I'll give a link to the website where you can download this one. But basically, it looks like this here. Let me, uh, I think I have to use the JPEG version. But, um, so I guess technically it's not an HDR then, but uh, it will work fine. I think the JPEG is the highest quality version here though. So just open up that texture there, and then switch to our world settings here in the node editor. So you see you have that little box there, then you have the node settings there. Switch to that, and you should see your environment texture and background shader right there. All I'm going to do is add in a texture coordinate node and a converter or vector mapping node. These are going to allow me to adjust the position of the uh, environment texture by choosing generated and plugging it into the mapping node and then choosing the vector and plugging it into the environment texture. So now if I go rendered, you can see I can position my HDR back there by using these settings here. So start off by changing the rotation of the Z till we see those mountains back there, those distant mountains. All right, that's nice. Let's change the rotation along the Y to bring those mountains into sight. Just a little bit maybe. And then let's kind of zoom out on our image by changing the location um, of the X and Y here. So taking the Y down kind of zooms me out a bit and a little bit on the X. So now I can kind of position my scene uh, with a nice landscape in the background there. So let's rotate that down a little bit, get just a little bit of those mountains into view. I think that will look kind of sweet. All right, something like that, maybe these clouds, and then take this rotation down a little bit. So we have those nice distant clouds there at least. Uh, and that looks, uh, looks pretty good. Now we just need to change the strength. We want this to be very low, we'll go 0.3. And now I'm going to add a few color adjustments to this as well. So uh, just moving these textures out of the way here, I'm going to add in a converter, no, color RGB curves. Plug that in. Let's take the color down a little bit. Give it a nice dark color. Not too far. And then uh, I'll give a little bit of a reddish tint to that sky too because we're dealing with fire here. So to the camera at least, it might look a little bit, a little bit reddish there. So let's just give it a little red. Nice. All uh, right, and now one more node drop in there, and that's going to be color, hue, saturation. I'll take the value down even more to darken it up a bit, and then I'll maybe a little bit of saturation. And then you can adjust the hue to give yourself a slightly orangish look as well. Um, let me see which direction do I want to go. I think 4-8. Four, 4-8, eight. Four, eight. no, it's kind of green. All right, we want to go up, I think, so I'll go 5-2. 5, 0.52, two. Five, two. or, f yeah, 5-2. Uh, it's kind of purpley. Take the saturation down a little bit. Too much saturation is looking bad, I think. And uh, just crank the strength down a little bit, too. You don't want too much too much lighting. Just a little bit. The uh, the brightness from the scene would kind of darken the background anyways. 
So that's kind of my theory on it. Uh, and it seems like we need to uh, set up our uh, our volcanic ground texture now. So before I do that though, now that I get my HDR there, I'm going to quick change my lamp here from a basic lamp over to a sun lamp. So choose sun lamp, choose use nodes, and I'm just going to leave it at a strength of one. We'll rotate it at a nice angle there. Give it a little reddish hue color as well. All right, something like that. Maybe a little bit more. And then go top view, rotate it. Kind of coming from the back here. This will look nice when you have your smoke. We'll kind of silhouette it a little bit. And uh, rotate it down a little bit more. There we go. And that should work. So if I go rendered, we should see some nice shadows now coming across. And it's nice and dark. There we go. Get some nice shadows there. Uh, okay, last thing before the next thing. I'm trying to think here. Oh, yes. What I want to do is change the color management. So as I'm working with the materials, this is something you want to do pretty early in your scene because otherwise you might have to adjust textures and stuff later, is switch to uh, what kind of look you're going to go for. And I'm just going to give this the basic film look there. You can see that changes some things up. Uh, I'm going to take the exposure and crank it up to 1. There we go. And uh, that looks pretty nice, actually. I don't think I need to change anything. All right. So we have that. And now I'm going to select my ground, switch back to my material editor and on my world editor there. And I'll quick set up the, uh, the volcanic material. So this is basically a little bit of a glossy material that I mix in here. So it's just going to be a shader, mix shader, and a shader glossy shader. Connect it to the bottom there. And you can see that's too much glossiness. Uh, but also it's too sharp of a glossiness because volcanic rock is not very shiny. It's more of a uh, widespread overall uh, gloss. So I'm going to go to a 0.3, and then uh, I'm going to take the factor of that down a bit. Don't want too much glossiness. Alrighty, and let's add some bump to that. So the bump is very easy. It's just a uh, converter or a vector bump node. We can use our image texture here. I see height, and then plug the normal into both the diffuse and the glossy there. And you can see if I zoom in here now, that will be too strong right off the bat, most likely. You'll want to just take that down a little bit. So there we go, 0.8, and uh, that adds a lot to our scene. So last thing now, and that's going to be changing the color of this rock. It's a little bit too reddish for my liking, and I want more of a black volcanic rock. So drop an RGB curves between your image texture and your diffuse, and let's darken that texture down a bit. So there we go, we got more of a dark volcanic rock just by pulling that down a little bit. And maybe just a slight bluish hue, because it's kind of cool when it contrasts with the red. Um, and that will do it. Very good. So uh, there's our material setup. Maybe take the strength down just a little bit more. And uh, maybe take the strength up of that lava a little bit. So to do that, we just use our multiply node and we'll just change that to two. And just gives it a little bit more emission. Um, you can also play with these settings if you kind of want to remove that, that weird edge that you get around the texture there. So uh, let me see if I can't just play around with these settings a little bit uh, and remove that at all. Um, all right. It's not going to be super noticeable, though, once we add the glows to it, so you don't have to worry about it too much right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and give a, a material to those particle systems. I think I'm coming... I think I'm coming close to the end of this part of the tutorial. Uh, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to fit it into one or not, but I think it might be a two-parter. I guess we'll see. But uh, yeah, select those particles right there in the center. Go ahead and select those. Let's give those a, a material. So the way we're going to do it, though, with these is we want them to kind of change in color depending on the particle lifetime. And uh, this is a relatively new feature in Blender that gives us the option to do just that. So go ahead and give that a new material. Uh, zoom out till you find it there. There we go. Uh, and this is going to be a emission material. So shader, emission. Uh, find it right there. Very good. And plug it into the surface. So with that plugged in, I still don't see any of those particles. So wait a minute. 
Let me see. Uh, maybe I have to quick change the render settings here. Oh, yes. Uh, right now it's rendering as a halo. Cycles render doesn't do that. We need to quick give it a, uh, a icosphere to render. So what I'm going to do is go Shift S, cursor to center. Shift A, add in an icosphere. Let's turn uh, the subdivisions down on that so it's nice and low quality. So we can uh, use a lot of them. And uh, that's all we have to do. <laughs> Basically, we want the material on this now, though, and not the emitter like I did before. So I'm just going to go grab that material that I created there. It would be material 2, because it's the last one I created, and give it to that Ico sphere. Once you've done that, just come back to your particle system, select it, go to your particle settings, and we want it to render an object, and that is going to be the Ico sphere right there. So you can see those are too big. Um, no big deal, just change the scale right there down to something nice and small. Give it a bunch of random size as well. Uh, let's turn that down even smaller, 0, 0.5. Very cool. And uh, yeah, maybe even smaller, 0, 0.3. Nice, and uh, that should do it. So we can do the material settings now, and we'll see our changes coming to effect over here on these particles that you see. So very good. Uh, maybe make them just a little bit bigger for now at least. Okay, so the way this works is we're going to add in an input particle info. All right, and uh, we need to basically divide the age with the lifetime. So I'm not going to get into the mathematics of it and why it works. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not really familiar with all that just yet, but I'm just going to show you that it does work. So you're just going to want a converter and change it to divide. And basically we're dividing the age by the lifetime. And that will mean that the particles that are just about to die will be uh, one color, and the particles that are fresh and new will be a different color. And to determine those colors, we're going to add in a color ramp. So this is going to be the factor of that. And these over here are going to be the new particles. So we'll make these white. And these over here are going to be the old particles. So we'll make these red. And then I'll give a color in the middle there that's kind of an orange. Similar to what we did with the volcano there. All right, and then just take the color and plug it into the color of your emission shader there. And you can see that uh, it changes the colors, just like we like. The newer ones are brighter, the older ones are red. So one other thing you can do to kind of make these fade out as they go is add in a shader mix shader and add in a shader transparent shader right there. Transparent will be in bottom, and then the factor for this will be the, multi the divide node that we used uh, on the factor for the color ramp. So drop that in there, and they'll fade out into the distance as they go. Very cool. Now let's just crank the strength up nice and high to about 15. Uh, it might be a little too high. Let's go 10. 10 on our, uh, our mission shader there. And that looks pretty sweet. Nice. So I want to do a quick render now to make sure this is all looking good. And uh, I'm going to add some motion blur to give those sparks some nice trails. And then that might finish up part one of uh, the tutorial series here, because I think it's going to be a two-parter. So go ahead and add motion blur and give it about two seconds of motion blur. Uh, basically, that's the time and frames between the shutter being open and closed. Uh, I'm not sure if that's in seconds or not, but uh, two should be a good enough value for us. All right, save your project, and let's just see what a render looks like real quick here. Uh, there you go. It looks terrible. No, it looks pretty good, actually. Uh, what you're seeing here is our collision mesh. Uh, I'm just going to go Option H, select that low-quality mesh, the 001, and let's just go to our settings here. And if you click that camera, it will basically not render that object. So if that camera is unselected, that object won't be rendered. So I'm just going to uncheck that camera, hide the uh, low-quality mesh there, and do another render. And you'll see that it is no longer there. So there's the start to our volcano. We have our lava pouring over and our sparks in the air. And uh, things are coming along nicely. The sparks are kind of fading off into the distance. Um, pretty happy with it. Might want to quick tweak these sparks. Let me uh, let me scale up the emission, the size. I'm sorry, not the emission, the size of the emitter here. And if I can grab that, move that over to the center a little bit more, pull it down. Make sure it's not visible from the camera. 
And let me quick rebake that. So to rebake, you just want to free bake. Uh, I might give it a little bit more brownie in motion too. We'll go 1.6. Okay. Maybe a little bit more random mission as well. 3.5. Just a few minor adjustments. And we'll click bake again. It should be uh, relatively quick. And uh, it should be a little bit more full with sparks coming out everywhere. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. If I give that a render there, we should see... Yeah, the sparks are spreading out a little bit more. It just looks a little, uh, little nicer. So there's a start to our volcano. Things are moving along nicely. And uh, I'll pick up with you guys to do the fluid and smoke in uh, part two. But uh, that will be it for this section of the tutorial. And I'll see you guys then.